Hello there, everybody. It's been a long time since I've done one of these videos about programming, and I was working on this game, and I thought, you know what? I should make a video. Why the hell not? So here I am. Um, one of my friends who I work with uh, brought up this idea. He wanted to create an Xbox game, and I was like, that's pretty ambitious. You've never even made a single game before, but okay. I hear you. And he wanted to make a chess game. Uh, you know, board game chess, like checkers, but chess. And I thought, mm, that's kind of interesting. That could be fun to do. Okay, good luck with that. Uh, but then I was at work, and I was bored. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start on this chess game and just, you know, do it for fun. See where I get with it. Uh, so I started building it in Java first. And I want to show you that. And then after that, uh, he installed, like, the XNA framework. And the XNA is Microsoft's framework for building Windows games, Windows Phone games, and Xbox games. Uh, so he downloaded that, and then I downloaded that, and then I converted my game to XNA. And that's built with C Sharp, which is kind of like Java. It's basically Microsoft's version of Java. Uh, but anyway, first I'll show you my Java code. So let's take a look-see. If you've seen any of my other videos, uh, I've done Tic-Tac-Toe, I've done Hangman, I've done Battleship. If you've seen any of those uh, videos, I usually only have one source code uh, Java file. Which is, isn't always the best thing to do uh, when you're writing programs. But I, you know, with those simpler programs, I just like to stuff it all into one big file. Uh, but with Chess... It's a little bit bigger. I figured I'd break it up into separate files. Uh, so I'll start with board piece really quick. Um, again, if you've seen my other videos, I have a board piece class. And basically this class is used uh, to set up my board. So, you know, in Battleship there's a board. In Chess, obviously there's a board. You put pieces on the board. So these board pieces aren't like the actual chess pieces. They're not like the pawns and the rooks and so forth. This board piece class is just something I use to uh, display the physical chess board and do other things. So you can see it has an image, so that's uh, what gets displayed to the screen. So right now my chess game is text-based only. It's in the console, like most of my other previous games I've made. Um, so this board piece has an image, so that's what's going to get displayed on the screen. Uh, it has this piece occupied, so that's going to be the piece that's on that board square. I didn't name things well, you know, board piece and then a piece. It's all very confusing. And then there's a valid. Um, this actually isn't a two-person normal chess game. This is a four-person chess game. So you can Google that. Uh, there's a four-person version of chess that uses an extended board. Um, so with the way I set up my board, which I'll show you, and if you've seen my other videos, you've, I didn't use the same basic formula there. Um, I use an, a multi-dimensional array, which acts as a board. And some of those pieces of the array aren't valid board pieces. So that's why I have that boolean there, true or false, if it's valid or not. If you could actually move a piece onto that part of the board. Um, so that's my board piece class. I also have a piece class. And these are the actual chess pieces. So the pawns, the knights, bishops, rooks. Uh, there's four properties here. There's a type. So that's if it's a pawn or if it's a knight, if it's a queen. There's a player. So white, black. And I think in this version there's silver and gold. Because there's four players in this one, remember. Uh, there's an image, so again, that's basically the same thing as a board piece image, but the piece image will overwrite the board piece image. So the piece image is basically, uh, you can see it down there, it's the player, so a W for white, a B for black, S for silver, G for gold, and then the type. So that will be P for pawn, K for knight, B for bishop, etc. And then whether or not that piece is active. I'm not really using that 
right now, but basically that means, you know, if it's on the board or if it's been captured. So if it's captured, I'll probably switch that active to false, but I haven't gotten that for it yet. Um, so here's my actual main class file. And just to let you know, I've created my board. So I have my board set up. I've got a couple pieces on the board. Um, right now I can basically put any piece I want on the board if I wanted to. But the only pieces that really um, have any logic behind them are the pawns. So I've coded the movements for the pawns, but not for any other pieces right now. But let's scroll through this really quickly, see what I've done, because I haven't looked at this in a couple of days, so I don't know. I don't remember myself. Uh, here is a property for whose turn it is. So it'll be black, white, silver, gold. That keeps track of whose turn it is. Uh, if the game's won, I don't know what this is. Maybe that increments every move? I don't know. But here's my board. Um, it's a multi-dimensional array of board pieces. Uh, these board pieces here are invalid. I'll run my program in a second so you can see why these are invalid, basically. And then I create new board pieces, and some of the board pieces I have placed pieces on. So I put pawns on a couple of my board pieces. So right now, when I start the program, it initializes a couple of the chess pieces onto the board, as you would expect. Uh, here's my main. This has my standard logic, which you might have seen in my previous programs. You know, it just initializes the game. It has a little prompt that says, enter your move. It goes through a loop that keeps accepting moves until somebody has one. I don't have any win conditions yet. Those might be tricky. We'll see. Um, so, do a move. It prompts the user to enter a move. Um, the user will type one in from the keyboard, push enter, and then it will go to this method or function, check move. So a uh, check move will eventually return a string. If the string, if it's a valid move, then the string will be okay. And then you could go to the next person's turn if the move that the user entered is invalid for whatever reason, then instead of returning OK, it'll return some error message like uh, you can't move there, uh, the move you entered, there's no piece there. So I tried to enter a board where there wasn't a piece, so that doesn't even make sense. Or anything else, any other errors that might occur due to stupid user input, uh, that'll get returned and displayed so the user can see that. Um, and if everything's okay, if it is a valid move, then I can actually process the move and move the piece where it needs to go and then reprint the board. Again, this is all text-based, so you gotta reprint out everything. Uh, let's keep looking. So first is the check move. So that's the first step into checking whether the user entered move is valid or not. Um, I won't go through all this exactly, but basically my first move is to see if what the user typed in even makes sense. Did he type in a valid board coordinates? Uh, let me just run my program so you kind of see what that looks like really quickly. So here's my board. This is four player chess, remember now, so the board's a little different. I haven't placed all my pieces on the board. If you look at the top here, there's some black pawns. So B for black, the player, and P for the piece. These are all pawns. Silver pawn, gold pawn, and some white pawns down here. If you see, I've got a grid. I think this is standard chess grid. Um, it's extended, though, because of larger board. So A through M at the top, and then 1 through 14. And this is tricky because, you know, arrays go 0 to 0 and they grow as you go this way. But my numbers are going down. So that 
uh, created a little bit of a challenge, but no big deal. Anyways, prompts user enter the move in the form of your starting coordinate, and then a slash, and then the coordinate of where you want that piece to move. So we'll start with one. We'll move a white pawn. Oops. Uh, e two. Move to e four because if you're familiar with chess, uh, the starting pawn move can move up two spaces to get the game a rolling. So there we go, and the pawn moved up two spaces. The board updated, and everything's all hunky dory. Uh, it's been about ten minutes. YouTube's a little persnickety there about the ten minute limit. So I'm gonna stop this video, and we'll start video number two with where we left off.